Good morning. We're back. Good morning. Another day. Good morning and welcome to uh, Detroit. What's happening, Detroit? Okay, <laughs> I get it right. <laughs> What's up, Detroit? What's up? What's uh, up, Detroit? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna I'm have a really really it. good show. <laughs> he's got a spider right here, man. He, uh, he's live already. Okay, that's all I want. He's just live. Uh, today we're gonna be featuring uh, uh, Miss Vanessa over here. That's <laughs> Hello. Venus. <laughs> <laughs> this is Venus, and she um, she's a visual artist. She's also a musician. She sings, she writes, she does tattoos. She's just an all-around super, super talent, and uh, she's coming here today oh, to, to give us a little <laughs> bit of enlightenment on what's happening in the new scene in Detroit, as well as what she's doing with her band. Uh, the band is called River Spirit. And, um, and then we also have Mr. Spider Turner over here, who's probably going to sing to us and talk to us and everything. As here, y'all. As here. Okay? As here. <laughs> That's right. Right. And, uh, you know, this show is basically about everything Detroit musically. And it, it doesn't matter if it's alternative music, if it's Motown. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about the history. We talk about the future of the music and where it's going mm -hmm. and uh, all of that good stuff. And so I know we all have something yeah. great to say about that. Right. Right? Even yeah. if it's uh, country music. Even if it's country. Because I'm from West by God, Virginia. Okay. And I grew <laughs> up on country music. <laughs> Did you not? Want to hear my root? Here it goes. <laughs> well, well, she's actually, always yeah. been my sweetheart. <laughs> Here we Even go. though she cheats <laughs> and she lies, ka -ching, ka -ching, many ka -ching. times I thought of <laughs> leaving, <laughs> but she's too ugly to kiss goodbye. Oh Lord, I'm that's great. <laughs> Man. Put put that that to an R&B groove, right? <laughs> yeah. You got an R&B groove, you can put that to. I don't know. We might yeah. be able to make a rap. Yeah. 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 I don't, I don't right. feel like I hear enough country in the in the scene, you know. Okay. So. In the Detroit scene. In the Detroit scene. Yeah. Well, it's a lot out there. I'm sure we can yeah. find it somewhere. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. There's a lot of you know underground artists. I feel like that are you know doing big things in Detroit, but I feel like, you know, maybe a lot of people haven't heard of them outside of Detroit, so I feel yeah. like that's a general, you know, like thing. Underground scenes. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, it's like when you talk about the underground scene of the music and ha things happening in Detroit, you know, it always takes me, takes me to hip hop or uh, mm -hmm. house music or techno music. Yeah, you yeah, know? I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of hip hop underground like electronic underground a lot of like a lot of hardcore and <laughs> grindcore uh, uh punk music and stuff too like mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of the one of the venues that i think of in one place that we've played a lot is trumpleplex and that's where i've come become like hip to a lot of like different core <laughs> like <laughs> hardcore like groups and everything we play with a lot of people that you know um fit in that realm so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um even outside of that too like i feel like there's <clears throat> just to like name a few um super cool wicked oh, wow. you know that's that's uh <laughs> someone uh morgan that i really like appreciate you know her music and uh her presence you know on stage and everything um what is the, what is the style of music for that? uh i would say definitely like r b oh wow yeah okay. um okay. and um, another person I can think of is Asante, um, who does uh, like more like a soca feel, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. from what I know, I believe he's Ghanaian. Okay. Um, okay. Wow. So, uh, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, kinda, inside, it's <laughs> funny to me because I grew up listening to Motown. Now, okay. I wasn't born. I was born somewhere around the end. Okay. <laughs> you know, give no numbers. But, <laughs> but I grew up listening to that because it was in, in the family, right? right okay, right, so right. now I have to ask this question because you did some of the Motown stuff, right? Okay. You were in the Motown era. Yeah. I so, did one song for Motown. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. The Last Dragon. But he, see, he's, the he's modern now. The Last Dragon. From the movie. Oh, yeah, from I saw the movie. That. You know, it I'm was the on TV. the first voice you hear when the movie starts. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> That's but you awesome. You know what? That movie was just on. Oh, really? Yes, it was. I missed it again. <laughs> well, it's always on, uh, what is that, Pluto TV? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's on cable, yeah. you know, yeah. on the. Um, I have the fire stick, so you can almost find anything. Right, right. And it was like, I was like, oh, I want to watch that with my granddaughter. Right. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, she'll like that movie. Yeah. Okay. But coming from there into coming into the late 70s, early 80s, and 90s, 
what was your take on the style of music that was coming in? You know, because we had rap and stuff. So, like, I'm looking at her music like alternative. What was your take on the music? Well, when the rap came in, I didn't like it at first. Yeah. Because I couldn't get to, used to the fact that people were selling music talking mm -hmm. instead of singing. <laughs> but James so. Brown was doing it? James Brown been doing it a long yeah. time. Yes. I mean, a lot you of different styles back, of rap. They had rap, uh, uh, Lou Rawls. Uh, yeah. You can go back to the 30s music and they had rap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, rap first started. Okay, and what, so, what was your opinion, realistically, you know? Realistically, <laughs> my opinion was, <laughs> when these guys start going in the basement and start creating this rap music, mm -hmm. it was a way for them to get paid Mm -hmm. and to keep them off the streets. Okay. Um, uh, what was I getting ready to say? Uh, I, I, I got a chronic case of CRS, y'all. I don't know if y'all know that or what it means, but can't remember it. Okay. <laughs> stuff. <laughs> chronic case, remember I stuff. can't remember. But they, they were making money and being creative, and it was uh, where the larger companies had kind of started buying up the mm. R&B labels oh, and yeah. Cutting, yeah. The, cutting the labels out mm. and stuff. Well, they made a way. Mm -hmm. to break through that. Mm -hmm. Started out by selling out the trunk of their car. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and then it became really popular. Mm -hmm. So, I love rap now. My son yeah. over there, he's a rapper. That's mm -hmm. Dog and mm -hmm. D. The all time mm -hmm. killer all the right. thriller in Manila. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, we just got back from Ohio yesterday. He was down there recording. Oh, wow. So uh, I want to hear some of your music. I want to hear, I mean, I, I love rap. Yeah, yeah, I do So, too. you know, the reason that um, I, I asked you about it was because it did do a about face. You know, I remember growing up singing Marvin Gaye. And, right, You right. know, then it, it got into some of the more current R&B with, like, Luther Vandross and started taking a, a different turn. R&B started becoming groove-oriented. Yeah. Because you had Luther, you know, who came through myself. Mm -hmm. It was all groove-oriented. Right. And so, but I, I used to love all of those songs and sing all of those songs when I was younger. Yeah. And then as the rap came in, I got into rap. Okay. okay. You know, I was yeah. actually into all the alternative music like Journey and yeah. Foreigner. I was, mm -hmm. <laughs> was jamming mm -hmm. to in my bedroom. You know, okay. people were like, what is she listening to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, rap was my thing, and so I started rapping. Okay. So I used to be a rapper. Yeah. My name was Queens of Rap. That's Daisy true. D. Okay. Yes. Lady Devastator. My Stata. favorite. My rap name was Papa D. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 so, you know, now that is something because rap connects the generations. Yeah. yeah. And I and put it, a little bit of it, I have a little bit of it in my show. Oh, uh, when yeah. I do my show, I do a little rapping. <laughs> oh, nice. Can, can, can we get a little Yeah, taste? can we get some? Uh, you got a freestyle? Okay. We uh, need a beatbox. We don't uh, need a beatbox. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, spider T, coming to you with the flip flop. Got the dope show. Make your eyes buck and lip drop. Right, I come properly humping straight out bumping. I'm going to break you off something. All right. I'm a non stopper, not a hip hopper, but I ride a track like a chopper. And if you want to know who I be, you better be asking somebody. Hey, yo, I'm Spider T. All right. <laughs> Man, I need that. Can you write me a rap? Nice. I want to do it on Sunday solid. morning when I do the, the service. Sunday morning we wake and walk in with a rap and it'd be a gospel rap. Okay. I don't know what we'll call we it, go. but okay. yeah, just something hype. Something, I mean, something maybe like just that, gospel that's rap, cool. you know what I mean? Like sometimes <laughs> I you know I can do is plainly stated. Okay. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but it, it just it's it's funny because I know that um a lot of a lot of people had criticism about rap as it came in mm -hmm. and you know it it took a serious turn you had uh, will smith when he put the jazz behind it and right. then summertime mm -hmm. or the summer madness thing summer madness, and yeah. then you had uh the beastie boys who put the rock spin on it you mm -hmm. had run dmc who made right. it hardcore oh yeah, yeah. you know oh, yeah. but we had people here in the city that was doing it and it was at the time rap was like an underground thing that had kind of taking its own shape and form because yeah, yeah. I was doing some of them underground shows <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. but it was so cool um, and then to see how it's evolved over the period of time it's just yeah. amazing to me okay. and then we got spider over here rapping and then I did yeah. rap and then what you did, did you yeah rap? I mean rapping <laughs> is an art I have huge respect for people who can you know just freestyle like mm -hmm. that's a whole different level of like you know rather than like writing a thing down having it prepared mm -hmm. I could do that but like <laughs> Yeah, freestyle, freestyle is another yes. realm. I tried freestyle. And it's amazing. Yeah. But I was like, 
yeah, I better just stick to the person with the paper. <laughs> I was sticking with the, the, the simplest rhymes, you know, like, bag, rag. Okay. That's what I knew it was time to leave the game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, the game. I was like, oh, these people are too intelligent for me. I got to come out of this. And then to hear, like, some of the rap, I don't even understand what they mean or what they're right, saying. What they're I mean, I know that it's relevant because Cindy, who's the 19-year-old yeah. daughter, can interpret and say, oh, they're talking about this and they're talking about that. Right. Yeah, because you got you got the new, the lingo, like, that's, like, made from social media. So mm -hmm. you got, like, <laughs> a lot of abbreviations of things, I right. feel like, maybe is, like, some of that <laughs> stuff, like the <laughs> OMG and the... You know, <laughs> all the yeah, all the stuff I know, okay. I have no idea what it means. Right, right. You know, I put these little cartoons on my messages. Yeah. <laughs> I saw on Facebook the other day there was a post with all the abbreviation and what they mean. You know, like oh my god and yeah. BFF mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you know what all of those things mean. Yeah, for, I need for that too. I need to know. Okay. <laughs> Unwise generation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's evolving every day. Well, yeah. You know, with each mm -hmm. generation, we all came up with our own languages, mm -hmm. our own words of. So the language has kind of flipped around and stuff mm -hmm. that meant one thing before now right. means something else. Right, mm -hmm. right. So basically it's just keeping up with what these <laughs> young folks is talking about. I right. hang around them. Okay. I hang with them. So, so you I, know. I, I kind of yeah. kind of like try to stay on it. Now, know. you know, one of my favorite words, and she'll tell you, was jive turkey. True, no. <laughs> true. But jive turkey back in the day didn't mean you were cool, did it? No. 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 It but didn't. I say jive, that's my jive, jive turkey, what's up? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know it as a generational term because it happened all my life. <laughs> you know. That's funny though. But when I was, and you know, like my granddaughter, I call her, hey, Jab Turkey granddaughter. She's like, Grandma, don't call me that. <laughs> but it's so funny because we did take those terms, yeah. you know, yeah. like uh, illin and chill and cool and, and, they all mean something different, you right. know, similar but different than different. what they meant before. Right. So, right. Right. you know, it's just really, really funny to see how uh, it always goes around and comes around, mm -hmm. comes back around. Yeah, yeah. different iterations mm -hmm. through time, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's it, what I was thinking about when I was asking uh, Spider about the music and how it changed. And um, I was thinking about how listening to music today and, and where we are as um, R&B, and then hearing the alternative styles of R&B now, mm -hmm. you know. So if you <clears throat> you consider R&B for me was Shaka Khan, you know, Whitney Houston. Yeah. But she went into pop kind of, you mm -hmm. know, uh, mm -hmm. things like that, music like that. And then R&B took another turn to go to the Jill Scotts and it became like yeah. Neo Soul. Neo Soul, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you had uh, groups like Diggable Planets and right. they were considered rap, but they were also yeah. R&B. Yeah, and they were yeah. like, they were a lot earlier than Jill Scott and yeah. everything, yeah. right? So, yeah. so um, they were. Yeah. And they did They're really thing cool. To, uh, jazz, I think. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And yeah, that yeah, was a lot so of jazz cool. included. Cool like that, for sure. a flat like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that really. <laughs> I feel like that. That yeah, was pretty cool. I, like, I, and I can't really like say. <laughs> I feel like they definitely set a tone with like the way that they like used jazz in, in that song. I'm cool like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, took it to that place that created like mm -hmm. what became, um, what became like neo soul. Like because I feel like neo soul has a lot of a lot of like jazz reference, you know right, what I mean? Right, um, right, Joe right. Scott. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she's just like the bomb. Also, I don't care yeah. what she makes. Yeah. She always gonna have some about food, greens, beans, tomatoes, potatoes. <laughs> Wrong song, but Yo, she right. always talking about food because she know food. She like, you know, Mama said they hit the stomach. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. the key to the heart. Yeah. Is the so I was obsessed right. with uh, I was obsessed with um, Neo Soul, but uh -huh. you know this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she was. Yeah, she was obsessed with Neo Soul yeah. for quite some time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what I remember, Kareem Bailey Ray was somebody mm -hmm. that I was really into. A lot, mm -hmm. you know, D'Angelo. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Who else? I mean, well, yeah, George a lot Clooney. Of, a lot of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a private joke. She's, you know, I would ask her something. She'd be like, George Clooney. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, no. I guess that's my jive turkey. Okay. That's my jive turkey. Jive <laughs> turkey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but so coming from coming from Motown into here and where the music was going uh, into the late seventies, and because I was listening to uh, the song um, Chic had, and it was. Oh, I can't remember the thing. It'll, it'll come to me. But I was listening to Sheik's music and, and listening to how it took a turn um, because it was disco, but it was going into R&B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I mean, that group was hot. Oh, my God. You said they're called Sheik? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Sheik. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. They made, uh, they made, um, they're the ones who made I Want Your Love, right? Yeah. I want your love. Yeah. And they I made another song that had like some love. jazz. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Oh, nice, nice. I want to okay. give you. But that had like jazz influence in it yeah. too. Yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. It was mm -hmm. really, really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. But to yeah. see the music turn and, and, and just keep changing, it just, yeah. it, it just amazes me yeah. uh, to see how music always finds another way. Mm -hmm. Or I'm, I'm not going to say music, how R&B. Yeah. yeah, always finds another way to recreate itself. Yeah, you know, and they could take the name, like you know, they try to take away the R and B, right? Call right, it hip hop, right? Right? You know, right. urban, urban, urban music, soul, urban soul. I mean, well, how would Gladys Knight feel about urban soul? <laughs> She'd be like, honey, I don't know what you I was on the midnight train. Okay. <laughs> so that's so amusing, honey. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like the more the more that um <clears throat> there are bands and, and artists that identify as um independent or are doing things independently mm -hmm. and aren't tied to like a label, they don't have to necessarily fit into a certain genre. So I feel like the more people that are like doing mm -hmm. their thing independently, the more the genres open up. Yeah. You have like new genres that you know you wouldn't have heard of like even like 15 years ago you yeah, know what i mean yeah, like in yeah. noise and, and just sound creation and stuff like mm -hmm. that so yeah um yeah yeah that's pretty cool though and then i mean i listen to a lot of old school jazz you mm -hmm. know because you know singing in different bands you better be versatile right, right? you right. know what i'm saying yeah. I, I had to know some country you know yeah. uh <laughs> i did dolly parton's version of i'll always love you and then whitney houston's version of I'll oh, okay. <laughs> okay. you know i had to learn them both right <laughs> yeah. but because i started singing in in different bands and depending on where the gigs were i had right. to know the music. the music and right. so a lot of it was some jazz standards and you know I didn't necessarily grow up listening to jazz standards mm -hmm. but I found that I really really liked it and so right. I, I kind of learned it and kind of made it my own thing mm -hmm. or became you know part of what it was that I was doing and R&B wasn't necessarily what I was singing doing mm -hmm. a lot of those gigs right. I was doing a lot of pop yeah or what they called at the time uh, easy, listening. easy listening yeah mm -hmm. I feel like pop rock 40. Yep, yeah. top 40, yes. From, what I, and from my perspective, like your, your most popular song that you would do, I feel like, was At Last by Etta James. That's the one they'd be yes. like, do At Last. Once they hear yeah. you sing it, it's just like, it's over. Yeah, it's funny, when you do the gigs, you do one song. <laughs> you say, that's your signature song. I sing song. that song 500 times a it's, year. Okay. <laughs> I can attest to this. That I one song, it's like, oh, man. You know, I'm, and then you finish doing the gigs, and you're like, I don't ever want to sing that song again, ever, <laughs> right, ever at right. all. So I know you probably had some. I felt that way about Stand By Me for Did a while. Did you? Yeah, oh, like, that's I'm so real. tired of this song, mm -hmm. and then I had to realize, you're only here because of this song. Okay? Yeah, so yeah. So I, I started loving it yeah. again. And you made it, a, you made it a hit again after it came out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really so love your awesome. reinterpretation of it. I Thank really you. love it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, what did you say it was? She, cause she I said, was. Oh, I was just saying earlier that I was gonna say to you that <laughs> I appreciate the fact that, like, you know, you covering the song, like, you didn't go and like just do the exact same song. Like, right. you expanded it, and like, it. I, I couldn't quite like say like it's definitely funky, but like there's some other some other things happen in some other spaces you're taken to through it that I feel like you know the 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 original version like you're you know chilling the whole time through but here you're like all right yeah no, <laughs> we're standing together yeah let's stand yeah, yeah. but you know it's it it like great. that though yeah. you know I, I never really got energy. to see you perform until I saw you with Sirius at the church, at the church. Okay. and I was like whoa and Brett was like you know he's the, over the church and he was like we got to have him on a Sunday. And I was like, how are we going to have Spider on a Sunday? What are you going to say? <laughs> Stand by me? Yeah, okay, we can do whatever. There we I don't, go. But, but your energy is so dynamic. Even when you MC, because I was watching you when we did the show out there at the, the Motown, Motown on the river. On the river, on the river yeah. and, but your, your energy is just so, you know, you just is like right on it. I'm just having fun. Yeah. If you ain't okay. having fun, you ain't doing it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> so yeah. When it becomes fun. work, it's a problem. Yeah, and I get, to, I get to be where a lot of people get to see me. Yeah. I've been a yeah. show off since I was five years old. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My but mama used to say, you always got to show your butt, huh? <laughs> 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 Give them a microphone. Let's make some money out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. That's Which all right. Which I did. Yeah. The company used to come over. And they used to give me quarters and mm -hmm. nickels and dimes and what? stuff for singing uh, Peace in the Valley. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Wow. I, was a, I was a little little fella then. Okay. I, I made my first $5. I was 13 with my singing group. 
Really? Yeah, we all went to the show and we bought uh, White Castles. <laughs> <laughs> they were like 14 cents, no, 12 cents. Then. Oh, wow, okay. We went to the show and stayed all night <laughs> eating wow. White Castles. Eating White Castle burgers. Yeah, you can get real full on $5 at White that's Castle the back in the day. That's the life for That's the life. White Castle has been around, hasn't it? A long it? time. Ooh, yeah. You can almost compare that to the music scene in Detroit. Uh, okay. You know, okay. I know people who's retired from White Castle because oh, okay. they had benefits. Oh, right. uh, <laughs> I know this one girl. <laughs> Man, she used to work at White She retired from White Castle. Yeah. She worked there for about 25 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she had benefits and everything. Wow. Blew my mind. I was like, maybe I go to she White Castle. I need a part-time gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been around almost yeah. like big boys. And yeah, I heard yeah. big boys is coming back. They took them out, and somebody's going to redo them. Well, I just came from uh, back from a trip down south, and I saw a lot of big boys. Oh, wow. But they renamed okay. them like Shoney's and okay. Uh, okay. Uh, restaurants like that. They got a couple of them, Shoney's. Uh, okay. I can't remember the other one, but yeah, so yeah. just the same style of restaurant. Same, yeah, yeah, same restaurant. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just like name. that's like a staple, you know, in yeah. Detroit. Yeah. you go around right on Jefferson mm -hmm. and yeah. the big boy right big there. Boy yeah, right you know, there. yeah. So cool. That's what I was gonna say. I'm like, there's still that one on Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. it's still open. <laughs> oh, I thought they took it away. I don't know. Maybe I, yeah. I haven't been down there in a while. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah. But um, okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on in the city this weekend. You know, uh, last week they started uh, at Mosaic and they had, I think the show, the show is called I Think You Can Dance. So You Think You Can Dance. And they're doing another one this weekend. I heard it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you get the chance. You guys go check it out. Mosaic is always an awesome uh, experience for anybody going to see the youth and the talent that's coming out uh, of the city. You know, it's just some phenomenal vocalists in there. And actors and, and the program over there, the people that direct it, is, it's just really, really good. Um, and if your kids are interested in the arts, you should try to get them into Mosaic. Yeah. Yeah. Really great program. Great program. Um, and then what do you have here, Spider? You got... Okay, this is coming up in October. This is called Detroit A Go Go. Well, they renamed it on this one Motown A Go Go. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done two here. It's a fellow from England. Mm -hmm. His name is Phil Dick. Oh, yeah. And he puts these on every year down at Burt's and at the uh, St. Regis Hotel. Okay. And what they do, they come in and they, uh, they hire all the uh, older artists from, <laughs> from Detroit. Like okay. we got uh, this year is going to be from the 23rd to the 27th down at Burt's. Mm hmm. The artists would be the Elgins, Kim Weston, Chris Clark, Carolyn Crawford, Brenda Holloway, oh, G.C. Yeah. Cameron, The Contours, Junior Walker's All-Star Band, The Original Vandellas, The Marvelettes, wow. The Velvelettes, The Miracles, Willie Kendrick, <laughs> Ronnie McNair, The Supremes, The Reflections, The Fantastic Four, J.J. Barnes, Pat Lewis, The Dynamics, Carl Carlton, I don't, I don't know if Carl's going to make it, yeah. um, The Wiley Girls, Spider Turner, yours truly. Hey, hey. Chris Peterson, Al Kent, Undisputed Truth. You're, oh. Okay, it, you're on this one. Okay. <laughs> I better show my Tony piece. Michaels, Drew Schultz, and The Broken Habits. Wow. And this is a uh, four day affair, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you'll have about five acts each night. Okay. And uh, okay. it's $25 awesome. a night to get mm -hmm. in. But uh, we'll have people will be coming from uh, England, from Spain, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Germany, from mm -hmm. Australia, Austria. Right. Um, did I say France? Oh, I don't think you said France, no, you but didn't say France. just yeah, throw it France, on it. Yeah. <laughs> from all over the world. Yeah. There'll be about four or five hundred people converging on Burt's okay. for a four-day oh, yeah. party. You know, Burt's is the place, right? Yes. Burt's really is. is the place. That so is. for those of you that don't really get to go to Burt's, this is an event you really want to go to. Yes, you do. We did the event last year with you guys. Yeah. You emceed last year, too. I yeah, last he's year. awesome. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. He's the bomb. I got to <laughs> find out what he do. I'm going to follow Spider from now on, and I'm going to start take, looking to take his place. Okay. I'm just letting you know right here, right now, I'm about to be an MC. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get your son to write me a rap. Okay. You know, I don't know what I'm going to call myself. <laughs> Daisy <But> D. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy D. Oh, no. Okay. But that event is really, really nice. And um, I, as a so-called semi-newbie uh, to the scene of Motown, um, I was just blown away by uh, Kim Weston, you know, to hear the voices and to, they still sound so great, you know. Um, it's, it just blew me away. Yeah. So you will get your money's worth. You come down to this event. You know, and, and the good thing is that uh, after they perform, they actually come into the audience. And you can actually take photographs with these people. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know, actually have a conversation with them. It's just a really, really nice event. 
And uh, the British know how to party. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they love their Motown, for they real. They love Motown. Yes. Yeah. And they so, don't want to hear the new stuff. They want the old right. stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. true. And they like it the way that they heard it. So you had said the Supremes. Yes. They're going to be on Lord and oh. Lord. Yes. Look at that. Them girls look fabulous. Okay. Woo. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Work it out now. Okay. So which Supremes are going to be here? This is going to be uh, Joyce Vincent. Um, can't see it. Okay. Don't have my glasses. Well, it's just, as long as it's a Supreme, because I was a fan of the yes, Supreme. Yes, Green Ooh. Mm -hmm. and uh, Sherry Payne. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. So you know, I, I'm gonna have to come down and hang out with you. I'm telling you, I'm, you I'm having it. a notepad. You got right? it. I'm be following it. That spider said this, and okay. this is where the joke comes in right here. And I'll <laughs> be there all four nights. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Man, you're gonna be exhausted. But you're used to doing stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. Pretty mm -hmm. much. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, and then what is this? This is another event right here. Actually, Sharon Jones has an event coming up this weekend, mm -hmm. and it's called the Summer Fest. Okay. It's uh, Miss Sharon Love Jones, another beautiful talent in the city of Detroit, an awesome vocalist, doing her thing. You know, I just love to see people do what they love to do because that makes people happy. And oh, the yeah. more happy people we have, the better the world is. Am That's I correct? Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so it's on here. It says Miss Jody or Miss Judy, and uh, Maurice Davis. And it's the Summerfest is at the Empire Event Center. And uh, it's August 17, 2019. That's this year. <laughs> okay. But uh, it's, it's another music event that's happening in the city. So you guys should check that out, too, as well. And, uh, and then there's something else on Labor Day weekend, August 31st. Uh, this is supposed to be really nice. This is another Sharon Jones event. And uh, it's, uh, it says Labor Day weekend, uh, all-star tribute show. And they're going to have somebody to do, like, a Luther Vandross, a James Brown. Yeah. Uh, so Aretha Luther. Franklin. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Braxton Bubba Bear Bassett. doing yeah. Teddy Pendergrass. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> where's, where's Braxton? Up at the top. Oh, yeah, he's doing James he's Brown. Doing James Brown. Yeah, and, uh, and then what is this? Michael, is that Michael Salter doing Michael Jackson? Mm -hmm. Whoa, mm -hmm. now he can dance. <laughs> yeah. okay. He can dance. I had him at my church one time for a concert I gave, and, and man, he just lit it. I was like, I need you to just go and fill up this space. He came in, he sang a song, but he danced. He just broke down. <laughs> the audience was standing there. They loved what he was doing, so he's yeah. really, really good. And uh, I just love to see events going on like that musically in the city all the time, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's always something happening. So yeah. that's always a, a yeah. great thing. Yeah. And um, so now we got Miss Venus here. We're going to talk to her about her music and get into uh, her artistry. She's also, like I said, she's a, an excellent tattoo artist, a visual artist. Oh, uh, she you. plays guitar. She started teaching herself guitar. She was like yeah, at was nine. She was like, Mom, I want 12. a guitar. I was What's it, 12? 12? Yeah. Okay. Was it? My memory's a little distorted. <laughs> yeah, I I'm got, got my first guitar at 12, thanks to you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I wanted an electric guitar, but she got me an acoustic guitar, and I was mm -hmm. like, ah. Uh, but I love it. I grew small. it grew on yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm just thinking no, no. realistically when you have you give a kid a guitar and they're going to be in a house practicing, yeah, learning no, how to play. You know, you don't want electric. It makes sense. Right. Though. <laughs> it made sense, and it was actually super helpful because you know the strings on my acoustic guitar or strings on acoustic guitars generally are a little bit more like tightly wound, heavier. So I was learning on something heavier so that when I went to the instrument, like the electric guitar, it was a lot easier for okay. me to play because I'm already used to this like heavier stringed instrument, you yeah, know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, it's good. It worked out in the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. super helpful. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get ready to take a small break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about what you do, uh, what your journey is, where you're going with your music and your tattoo artistry. And um, we'll do that shortly.
TV 33 is moving to WHPS TV channel 15.2. Make sure to rescan the channels on your TV. Then go to WHPS channel 15.2 to pick up TV 33 and all of your favorite shows. The move is on and we want you to move with us to WHPS channel 15.2. Welcome back to What's Up Detroit. We're back. Yes, What's I'm up, sitting Detroit? here with Mr. Uh, Spider Turner. I'm going to stop saying Mr. Because <laughs> well, you're too cool for that. Okay. You too, I'm sitting here with Spider. And you're too cute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking. You just call me Spider. I, I'm not going to call you no job turkey. <laughs> okay. I won't do that. <laughs> and uh, Miss Venus over here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, we're going to talk to you and find out more about what you do. Okay, so now, uh, of course, I know your history. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you can kind of give a little bit of it. I don't have to ask the question, do yeah. I? Yeah. <laughs> so, you want to talk about tattoos first? You want to talk well, about no, music? Uh, what, okay, now, <laughs> I realized you had talent as an artist when you were a little girl. Mm -hmm. So, as you grew up, what did you want to do with your art? Well, I mean, I never really... You know, growing up, it was just something that I really loved to do, like specifically drawing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know me, I'd be <laughs> just like, I'd have a sketchbook and I would fill it with just portraits of like artists, music artists that mm -hmm. I listened to and mm -hmm. that I was obsessed with at the time. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'd take my book to school. Anytime I had a break, I would just be drawing, you know, like uh, mostly portraits. I was really mm -hmm. into portraiture mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Well, this is a little later in life right now. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> this image great. that we're looking at right here. Um, I did this actually maybe like two years ago, and mm -hmm. I was um, just kind of experimenting with watercolor, which is a medium I never used before. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it actually came out a lot more, <laughs> a lot darker, like just literally in the colors, you know, that I was able to pull from it. Um, not as, you know, like washy as I've seen a lot. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. used to working in um, color pencil mm -hmm. and like um, oil colors and yeah, yeah. acrylic paint too. So mm -hmm. that's, I'm used to like the instant like richness, you know what yeah, I mean, of the color. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for that to be watercolor, that was super, super vivid. When you showed it to me, I was like, wow, there's watercolor. Yeah. Most yeah. watercolor I see usually to me looks pastel. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, so that was the fun of it to me is like doing a watercolor painting and not making it look like a watercolor yeah, painting. Yeah, that was so cool. <laughs> you know, so um, cool. like a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, even with music, I try to like stay not, I don't know, not stick to like a genre or anything or not think mm -hmm. of it in that way, but rather like be like ex explorative with it, you okay. know, and yeah. see what comes like from me, okay. you know, okay. rather than going for a sound or something, right, right. you know. So now and in school, you, you would win all these awards for your art, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I used to wonder, <laughs> what is she going to do with her art? Because the art was really, really good. Yeah. I mean, like... You know, I was just, I was amazed to see how, how vivid the art was, mm -hmm. you know, how, uh, how detailed. Yeah. I know uh, Hubert Massey, Detroit's, you know, uh, one of Detroit's greatest artists. Yeah. He always commented on how your depth, your perception of depth, and how you make it look like it's so real, like it's, you know, in your face 3D mm -hmm, almost. Mm -hmm. And he would always comment on how he loved that about yeah. the art that you were doing. I feel like I've always naturally been drawn to realism, you know, even mm -hmm. though I still like filter things like through my perception and it's not exactly realistic yeah. um, all the time, but it's, I guess like the way that I use lighting and stuff mm -hmm. is like always referring to realism. Um, sometimes I like to, I, I guess like that's, where surrealism comes into play is okay. like things look real but they're like kind of i don't know skewed in a certain way mm -hmm. um i like to play a lot with i don't know darkness mm -hmm. and <laughs> i guess like content wise yeah. um and uh, but you were saying something about um what i was gonna decide to do like with my 
my skills and everything, um, I didn't really like have a clear vision for a long time because it was drawing, you know, like, and mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily want to be an architect. I didn't, I didn't even necessarily, you know, want to be showing <laughs> in like super prestigious places with like white walls and like, you know. <laughs> you didn't want to be in the galleries. And not necessarily, you, you know, at the time. And what, um, how did you perceive that art? that was in galleries did you think it was like kind of sterile or typical of what people no expect? not necessarily like i feel mm -hmm. like there's there's a lot to be found in especially in like contemporary art um you know you can do anything and yeah, yeah. that's one thing i appreciate and one thing i one thing i try to like practice in the things that i do is like <clears throat> not taking the space to like feel like i don't have to explain okay and yeah. so and i feel like that can like that has like held me back in the past mm -hmm. feeling like I don't want to um, do a thing because if I can't be totally like accountable for the images that are in in the pieces then I don't want to like do it and like raise questions or whatever uh -huh. and like okay. have to explain it okay. but um, <laughs> but I you know I've gotten out of that because I feel like there's power in just doing it yeah like you know it's coming from your your um, intuition yeah you know yeah that's how I treat music. <laughs> so now, at, when you, at, as you continue to go on into the art and, or into art mm -hmm. and visual art, you decided that you didn't want to necessarily just stick to that medium. Yeah. You wanted to go and do other things. Yeah. And it was part of the reason why I, you know, dropped out to, I, I was going to CCS um, for fine arts. Mm -hmm. And actually when I, when I was going there and I uh, was speaking to the counselors before I decided well, I, I knew what I wanted to go into. That was the thing is yeah. they were telling me that because <laughs> of the type of art that I did, I should be going into illustration. And I mean, I, I, I was like, no, you know, for no <laughs> other reason than like, I know that like the foundation classes for fine arts, I could do anything. I can like mm -hmm. do metal shop, I could do wood shop, you know, I could do like sculpture of different yeah. kinds and everything yeah. too. And I, I wanted that freedom to experiment, Okay. you know? Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, I like to, like, have my hand in a lot of different things right, and, like, right. try different things out. I have the space, too, and the resources, too. Right. I remember one time you made the lamp out of metal. Yeah. yeah I, kind of I never really away. put a she light bulb in, in there. She was in school when she did I was like, well, that's, <laughs> okay. that's very interesting. It was fun. But you fun. know what? They do that now. Yeah. They yeah. make lamps out of, out of metal, and they have, like, the little holes, yeah. and then it shines I wanted on the to wall. punch some holes in it, but the metal I used was way too thick. <laughs> 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 but it was cute. It was yeah, cute. Yeah, and you do wood burning as well. You, you, yeah, 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 yeah. I've done a lot of wood burning. <laughs> it's just, I just like to experiment. I like yeah. to try my hand at a lot mm -hmm. of things, and in a lot of cases, like, you know, I figure my way out enough to feel like I'm good at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. So yeah. th that journey took you into the tattoo mm -hmm. realm. And mm -hmm. so yeah. how long has it been now that you've been tattooing? I've been tattooing over nine years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. It just seems like it's been like a couple it's years. It flew by, yeah. yeah. But I'm glad to be able to say it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, to have that experience behind me. Yeah. And to do it at the time that I did, too, because I was in a space where I had, you know, I dropped out and... I was kind of floating around and I was mm -hmm. just like, you know, I need to do something sustainable with my art, with the things that I like to do. Mm -hmm. I need to make money, you know, um, it's just practical. Kind of like uh, Spider with the hat the, when he was 13. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to, you know, yeah, yeah, you yeah, like if I'm, I'm going to continue to do what I love, I have to make it sustainable so that I can actually live you know, off of it and everything right, um, right. And, and not have to do anything right. else. <laughs> but you've done some really, really great tattoos, you know, yeah. you did the, um, I don't know if we, he has the picture, but you did the, the Buddha and, oh, um, yeah. and then you, who was the bat, the baseball player you did the tattoo for? Um, he was, he played for the Minnesota Twins. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name right now. Ooh. That <laughs> was a while ago. It was a while ago. I do. That's what I'm saying. Like, I totally, I, I, I can relate. <laughs> CRS is contagious. Yeah. Come on, help me. <laughs> but, yeah, so the thing that impressed me about your tattooing is that, you know, when, when she came to me and she said, hey, Mom, I really don't want to do CCS anymore. I want to go into tattooing. And she said, I promise. I promise I'll get licensed and I'll do it for real. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to tell you it's going to be good. It's going to be good. And I said, okay, well, hey, it's your life. You got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to do. Then, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to support you. Yeah. Uh, so much so that I got my first tattoo from her. 
(laughs) (laughs) You know, I was the guinea pig. You know, she was like, I need somebody to tattoo mom. Do you mind? I was like, It was a little after I started. Yes. (laughs) I tattooed myself first before I tattooed anybody else. She tattooed herself and then she (laughs) tattooed me. (laughs) I'm like, if I'm going to do this to anybody else, I got to see what it, you know, I I got to be the first one. Yeah. And then, you know, what's so funny is that she was like, oh, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt you. I was like, girl, please just do the tattoo. That was the biggest hump to get over was like, hurting people like I just had to get over it I'm like look this is the only way it's going to be able to happen <laughs> and stay so I just got to do yeah. it gotta, you mean it hurts <laughs> right, it right. hurts well, okay. I, I, I definitely made up my mind you ready to get your yeah. spider web no <laughs> I don't like pain oh man that's so funny <laughs> actually I what happens is I can't call my mama <laughs> you can though you can though you still call her still, still has the same effect <laughs> but actually what happens yeah this is the picture of the Buddha that you did oh yeah is that on Marcus yeah that's uh, my little cousin Marcus yeah yeah. So he's not she, so little she anymore she did the Buddha on there and so but what what impressed me was that the art looked just as good as if you did it on on uh, a canvas you know and that I was like wow how to see that transform from Mm -hmm. canvas to skin just blew me away and I know that there are other tattoo artists that do the same thing but Mm -hmm. I had never seen it quite as vivid yeah, you well, know, thank you. And that's what Hubert commented on. He was like, mm. man, her tattoos look just like her art. <laughs> and that's what, what, yeah. what was so awesome. Uh, and that's like the, the, the th- I've like reached the threshold in tattooing where I'm not, I'm no longer like getting used to the weight of the machine. Yeah. Well, it's been years at this yeah. point. <laughs> and so that was really the goal from the beginning was to, to be as, for, for, my interpretation to be as accessible as it was when I was just mm-hmm. picking up a pencil and it was like simple as a line, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and or as instant. I, I consider myself to be like pretty efficient when it comes to doing tattoos. Mm-hmm. Like I've, you know, I uh, did a tattoo a few days ago that I feel like you know could have taken me four hours but i did it in two and it looks you know amazing like it looks to my you know to my like standard and everything Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um i just get so in the zone you know it's something that i love to do so it's easy well we gotta set up another appointment because i need to be refreshed i know right you need need to add on it is being brave i'm telling you because she's been like mom we gotta we gotta tighten you Mm -hmm. up i'm like no not yet you you have to have your mindset to do that and part of the thing that i love about doing tattoos is like i've 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 found a way to, you know, it's it's like hanging out with people. It's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. some people consider it to be therapy, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. And some people, you know, use it as an alternative to like, d- like you know, <laughs> self harm, you know, oh, and oh, and stuff oh, like okay. that. Like it's er, just in that sense that it's therapy. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and it's a it's a it's a a good alternative to yeah. like. You know, and, and we'll, like, end up getting together and, like, we'll talk about maybe some pretty heavy stuff, you know. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. and then it's times like that that I realize, like, how, um, you know, how it impacts me and how it impacts other people and how yeah, yeah. intimate of a experience it is mm-hmm. to sit and, like, edge something into <laughs> someone's skin that's going to be there forever. Like, you know, t- and more than that, you know what I mean? They're, they're going to remember... Okay <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna remember the experience, you know, yeah. too, and and I yeah. love talking to people and um, yeah. getting to know people through that because yeah. it's just like <laughs> the most extreme situation you could be in with a person in the instant, you know, that you meet each other. And right, it's like, all right, right, well, sit down, take your clothes off, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm gonna shave you real quick. You know? <laughs> That's true. You, I'm like, I shave everybody I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I've seen some of the places that the tattoos go, and I'm like, whoa. And she, I mean, it's just like so commonplace to her. It's just easy for her to do, yeah. right, you right. know. But her her spirit is so laid back and relax she's like yeah yeah it's just yeah do what you gotta do <laughs> i'm like okay okay you know because i would be like shy you know i don't want don't take your shirt off let me leave the room okay. that's just i mean i gotta off. be professional like it's it's pretty much like you know and and and, and then saying that a doctor has to be professional and mm-hmm. like you know yeah. that's just what it is mm-hmm. and you know i try not to like make it like super personal yeah, you know yeah, yeah. um but people got to feel comfortable you know when they come to me and um that's a part of the reason why i'm freelance you know i don't have to like i don't have to i i i create the space that people come into and it's a comfortable space and a welcoming place um so you have most of your 
your a lot of the work that you've done on Instagram. Mm -hmm. and they can, what's your what's your page on Instagram? My Instagram is Venus, like the planet, Venus underscore tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, and they can see all your work. Yeah. So just check it out. I it's mean, basically like an archive portfolio of all my tattoos. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's pretty, pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So now from the tattooing, now I know that's just one aspect of it, but you were still doing music at the same time. Yeah, um, pretty much. Actually, I started both. Or actually, I started playing music before I started tattooing. Right. Um, and I, you know, I've been playing music on my own since I was twelve. Mm -hmm. You know, for a long time up until I met Dan, who is the other guitarist in mm -hmm. the band. Um, I met him at CCS, mm -hmm. and so um, our um, the Dan other person, Stedman. Dan Stedman, yes, and then the drummer. What's his name? Paul Wilcox. Oh yeah, Paul. And actually, He's really cool too. Dan and Paul have known each other since high school, and okay. so they knew each other before I met either of them. And um, I met Dan first, and I remember <clears throat> we were uh, in our fine arts class together and he <laughs> just looked at me and was like I like your earrings and that was the start of that was history right there because <laughs> he liked your earrings I'm like you're kind of yeah. cool you're kind of cool <laughs> that was the but first they've been thing friends they've been hanging out forever I mean yeah. it's like we've been pretty tight um, mm -hmm. and it's over 10 years now yeah you know we hit the 10 mark yeah, yeah. and so ten, you guys you, uh, well I I had your first project mm-hmm well, I actually, I have them all. <laughs> you got them all. But <laughs> Even before. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got all this stuff. I do. I have CDs of her playing stuff that she just recorded. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. just, you know, I keep it. I don't even know if they work anymore. I just keep it because it's something that she did at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. But you put together River Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so now, what was the idea of coming up with River, River Spirit? And why did you guys choose that name? So initially, um, when I met Dan, you know, we <clears throat> both like, <laughs> we were both super into um, playing guitar, mm -hmm. and that was something that, you know, I was kind of, like, shy about um, singing and playing <laughs> guitar. And so I would go to his house and hang out with him, and he'd come and be like, yeah, so play this song for me and my mom. <laughs> he'd be like, sing it, sing it. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> and so it kind of, yeah, so doing that... Um, I got like a little bit more comfortable playing with other people and so we would just jam at his mm -hmm. house and have people would come through and you know jump on the bass jump on the drums you know and like we it, it became something that we just like did for fun and like we would all just meet up groups of us and and uh, just jam yeah. and hang out all day literally just playing music all day <laughs> well that's kind of cool because that you know that actually reminds me of the getting together like the doo-wops getting on the corner everybody oh, just yeah. hanging out mm -hmm. singing yeah and it they were doing it but they were doing a different style and mm -hmm. different genre of music mm -hmm. right yeah. um and, and it was just, just fun. a jam session yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> it was just fun you know um and we weren't really perceiving it as something that um see i didn't do that could ultimately I on the corner and do that i'm sorry no. <laughs> i digress <laughs> yeah I, I mean i just i didn't i didn't do it i, I sang in the bedroom in the mirror and yeah <laughs> that was my extent got together with my home girl we started rapping but we didn't do the yeah. we didn't do that mm -hmm. so i i admire that about you guys being yeah. able to do that i, I was yeah. too shy but go yeah. ahead i mean and it was mostly because like after a while you know like uh we there was four of us and uh we used to play with Sasha Kashperko who played bass for us mm -hmm. and you know we were making music that was ha it, we all had different influences like mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. math rock influences R&B influences like rap influences mm -hmm. and just different different rocks just lots of it's all over the place yeah. and so that was like super reflective uh, or reflected through our music yeah. um, even early on mm -hmm. and um, you know, we were sure we were in. There was phases, different phases <laughs> of like awkwardness, where like you know we were doing crazy time signatures, like back to you know back and back. But it was super unique. Yeah. yeah. And um, and I think that you know we all like understood after a while that like this is something like really cool that we mm -hmm. want to like mm -hmm. show to people, and that's um, <clears throat> really the basis of like where mm -hmm. we are today and like why we do it in the way mm -hmm. that we do it and. At some point, you know, a thing has to become sustainable. So, like, right, you know, right. yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got to yeah. sell stuff, you know. So, <laughs> but at the core, it's just really fun, yeah, you know. Yeah. 
I remember when you first started playing guitar because, you know, uh, what impressed me was the ability to be able to play with both hands. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was so melodic. Yeah. I was like, wow, you don't necessarily need another person. <laughs> because <laughs> she could play the rhythm, the bass line. I was like, wow, mm -hmm. look at that. And, and so, um, and that's a lot of the reason that, you know, like we've kind of kept it as, or at this point where it's just two guitars, it's me and Dan on guitar and um, Dan does backing vocals when we play um, mm -hmm. or when we perform and I'm doing lead vocals and then there's Paul who drums. Okay. And so we keep it kind of simple because between me and Dan, we fill so much space mm -hmm. space with the two guitars because I am so heavily like folk influenced. So I'm yeah. filling bass, bass lines and lead lines and yeah. he's like fitting, you know, somewhere in between. And like, yeah, you know, yeah. we like do a sort of dance sometimes yeah. when guitar and the way that we like to to write them together too. <laughs> right, and right. that's intentional. Yeah, and um, that, that's really, really take cool up space to in that hear. Way. So are you going to be playing anywhere in the city anytime I'm soon? Actually, not, we don't have anything booked right now, but at the moment, uh, we're kind of like taking a little, just a little like, you know, a little breather. Because uh, we just, audience, yeah. I really want to hear your show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we just, yes, you just came back from like doing your own little yeah, tour. Yeah, we, we did a tour with uh, Wizard Apprentice, uh, who is an electronic, mm -hmm. kind of folky electronic artist. Okay. Um, the content is pretty like heavy but um i really love her music and her um approach to performance is yeah. super um immersive like mm -hmm. you're there with her being like oh, oh i feel you <laughs> i feel you yeah, i remember back in the day they used to try to compare her to tracy chapman she was like mm -mm, nope nope my music is okay. not like but <laughs> i mean musically you, you, if you hear tracy chapman's music mm -hmm. then you hear the rhythms and everything that I'm talking mm -hmm. about in the uh -huh. music. And, and I understand. Okay. It's like, you know, she because she did have also a lot of folk, you yeah. know, yeah, and a folkiness about mm -hmm. her. Yeah. And I'm super influenced and inspired yeah. by her and everything. Yeah, but too. your music, <laughs> to me, I, I hear some things from is the artist Bjork. Bjork what's yeah, her name? yeah, yeah. But I hear a lot of her influence in your mm -hmm. music. Oh, yeah. I, I hear some you. India Ari influence in your oh, yeah, music. totally. You yeah, know, you know, I hear the, a little the soul, soul influence in her, in her know. music. Um, but <laughs> I hear soul, rock. trip hop, you know, those trip things mash <laughs> together. <laughs> what is trip hop? I love trip hop. trip hop. So, I mean, it was a, trip hop, I feel like, was in its truest form in the late 90s mm -hmm. and, like, early 2000s, maybe. So, um, Massive Attack. Okay. Um, you got a lot, a, lot of, a lot of their songs and films, like, The Craft. Okay. You know, yeah, it's a lot yeah. of, like, oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the more, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I was gonna say like a, a culty or something, yeah. but like, but there's I guess there's Dark. like there's like a hip hop beat, and then there's like you know you got a heavy like uh, no, 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 bass line that's moving around. Yeah, yeah, hip hop yeah. beat under that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But like Tricky is a person. Yeah. I don't know if you know Tricky, but uh -huh. he, he used to be he used to make a lot of appearances in uh, Girlfriends. Okay, yeah, um, you yeah. know Persia yeah. White. Uh, was dating him at one point in the oh, show, wow. okay, yeah, and yeah. Uh, she was doing trip hop, and oh, I was like, right. I love she this, sure yeah. That's so right. that's <laughs> if there's a reference that's for you. Right. Wow, okay, okay. So yeah. this is your last project that you put out. Yeah, so um, it's called Me I Fall, and it's our first full length release, mm -hmm. and we released it in January, um, and we did a release party that was a really great turnout. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> at uh, the Outer Limits Lounge, and uh, that's one of my favorite places right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the owners are really sweet, uh, John and Kelly Caldwell. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've it's got nine songs on it, um, and it's uh, it's my baby. So you guys <laughs> all produce this all independent. Yeah. You do so your own writing your own. CD mm -hmm. production, you do everything. You even do your own art for the project. Yeah, so, um, and, and we like it that way because uh, the full control, you know, and, and if, if there's a vision, I feel like it should come from the artist. And, yeah. you know, I yeah. feel like there's no reason why we can't all put our, you know, because Dan, he, he stayed in his, in his CCS <laughs> program. He got the, <laughs> he he got the degree. The <laughs> but, I mean, we both have, like, a more visual art background, too. So yeah, it's, like, yeah. another way to utilize that where we yeah. can, like, fully, you know, be what we want to be, like, right. in the project. Right. Right. <clears throat> so um, where can we get the CD? So the CD, you can, you can order from Bandcamp. 
um, bandcamp.com slash river spirit. Um, and you can order the the CD, but you can also order a cassette. Yeah. And on the cassette, there's a bonus track, bonus <laughs> little remix track. So there's a little, but that this is actually the, this is the, the, other the second EP that we yes. came out with uh, the January before. We've just been on a, a January tip. <laughs> and so what was the idea behind the cassettes? So is it just for nostalgia? Yeah, some yeah. nostalgic factors. Like I feel like another thing that between me and Dan, one thing we like about cassette is the the physical like warping <laughs> of the sound. You know, sometimes uh -huh. it changes and it's like it's true to the sound, but there's a there's a, a quality of like time, yeah, you know, like yeah. over time yeah. your tapes are gonna change, your 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 mm -hmm. it's gonna get a little, it's gonna change pitch, you know what I yeah, mean? That's like true. and that is so true. it's just a, uh, I guess like yeah, very nostalgic for us yeah. and and um, um, just to have it in this physical form like yeah. kind of reminds us of. You know, <laughs> when we had tapes of yeah, you know, artists yeah. and to Just see it so like professionally put nostalgic. together, it was such a that's like, such a treat. <laughs> that's like when you, when you see some of the music nowadays, they go back to putting it on the vinyl. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, I I used to think yeah. it was just for the DJs, but it wasn't necessarily just for DJs. They was doing it because people really wanted to play yeah. vinyl and hear right. that yeah. crackling. I sound. mean, there's like, right. Ooh, right. there's the trend. Like I feel like there's a huge trend of tapes coming back in Detroit mm -hmm. with underground artists. Okay. And um. But I feel like also, yeah, for vinyl too. Vinyl is kind of expensive, but yeah, like yeah. The, the, I think it's about the quality of sound too. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I feel like you just hear things differently when right. you know it's not compressed to yeah. all be digital. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's how I feel about it. That's why I well, want it. <laughs> I appreciate all the music. I do. I appreciate. I, I appreciate the journey that music is. You know, uh, I was reading something today about the history of the music in Detroit, and you know, there's a jazz. You know, there's a, a super, super jazz current of music in Detroit. Mm -hmm. The rock. It's it's so much music here for all of us. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. and they're uh, trying to uh, build the uh, rhythm and blues hall, hall of fame. fame right hey, hey, you're in the hall of fame, aren't you? Um, yes. Come on, I give me bam, 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 bam. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Both of y'all, both of y'all. I don't know that range, that range <laughs> spider. I'm about to get me one. See, I told you I'm gonna have to follow Spider over here. I'm. I thought I lost my knuckle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, I want to thank you for being on our yeah, show today. Of course, and, thanks and for having me. I really, really appreciate you being here and telling us about your music and art and, and just kind of mm -hmm. discussing the connection from music and throughout the generations and the decades. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I feel like lineage is a really important thing. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know... Um, it's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. You. Yeah. You yeah, know. that's true. Yeah. Um, and I feel like for you, you mm -hmm. know, it dates back to like people in our family, like mm -hmm. who, you know, you've probably been in inspired or who you've definitely been yeah. inspired by. <laughs> well, my mother <laughs> wasn't like, really nothing. known, but I was so inspired by her and my brother. Mm -hmm. they, they're really the two that really would have wanted to make me uh, sing. Mm -hmm. My mother okay. sounded like, um, if I had to give her somebody that she sounded like new school, it would be Faith Evans. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. She, and mm -hmm. she could go. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, she could sing. Yeah, you and, um, mm -hmm. and so, but I, I just appreciate you being here and sharing that with us. And we got to have you back. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, honestly, there's so I want to do a about. little performance. You know, <laughs> I do a little acoustic. You know, I just bring the guitar right up here you know yeah yeah, there you go. Oh, that, yeah that would be kind of cool mm -hmm. i can do that that's what i'm that. saying i can do it. and then um spider so you know what, what you got going on we we got to get ready to get out of here now well we're recording um we're also getting ready for this motown to go go yeah uh, my son and i were recording we we're recording with the guy uh a guy named jimmy cheers okay who used to be like the uh national disco director R&B director at Capitol Records. Oh, nice. And, okay. And uh, he's got this song called Don't Drop the Bomb on me. Okay. Which, uh, oh. My son just put, laid down the rap on it. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that when, when, when can we get that? Probably in about another three weeks. Okay. Ooh. I would say All right now. three weeks to three to four weeks. So, right. you know, we got to have that on yes. the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So yes. I'm looking forward to it. I want to hear it. I will bring it, it in. Yes. I, I, I value it. I'm telling you. I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. I'll but bring him in too. too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, bring. Come on. You got to come on in, son. Okay. <laughs> but we got to get out of here. That's our time for What's Up Detroit. We thank you guys for joining us and uh, yes. listen, listening to us kind of chit-chat about a little bit of everything yes. as we do. Yes. Spider and uh, Joe will be back with us 
the next time we come next week. And uh, maybe we'll get Vanessa and Spider to join us on that show as well. So okay. you guys stay good, stay well, keep the music playing. As Barry always said, let the music play. Okay. And we'll see you next week on What's Up Detroit. <laughs>